Hi friends! My voice is cracking. <laughs> this is only recent as of today. So it's why I'm drinking hun honey and whiskey and lemon. That's what you're supposed to do, right? So today's video is going to be my January favorites because it is the end of January as I'm recording this and probably the beginning of February as I upload it. So that's just what you do, right? So let's get started. Thank you, R&R, &R, for being sm so smooth. Smo, smo smooth. So smooth. So let's start with makeup favorites. <laughs> uh, I have a handful of things. First two being uh, my favorite palettes of the last month. You all know how I feel about Modern Renaissance. You all know my long-term relationship with this palette. I have hit considerable pan on tempura and I'm, I'm, I'm determined to use this palette, if not all the way up, but to hit pan on every single eyeshadow this year. Extensive pan on tempura, decent pan on Vermeer, almost pan on golden ochre, and almost pan on Prima Vera. Almost there. And then on Juan Fresco, I'm almost there too. It's my goal at the end of this year to have hit pan on all of these shadows and to have used up at least a few, and I think I'm on my way there. I'm kind of on like a no buy right now or like a low buy. I'm like, I'm only buying things that I like literally need like moisturizer and stuff and mascara. But in terms of like new fun things, I'm not really buying anything right now because A, I don't need anymore and B, I'm broke. So the other favorite palette I have from this month is the Kat Von E Pastel Goth palette, which I busted out a bunch this month, particularly to do like bright colored looks where I was mixing Doom with uh, Clementine as well as the Modern Renaissance palette. So I, was, I did this like blue and orange kind of halo eye thing. I don't know why I was doing like Tide Pod themed colors, but apparently I was taking the blue and orange. But I love this palette. It's great, it's tiny, the colors are really nice, and the really nice crease shades, like transition shades, if you want to do like a bright color look but don't want to use like tan as a transition shade, it, it, this is really nice for warm tone shade, warm tone eyes as a transition. This is also really nice for a transition shade for warm tones. These two are really nice for like rosy, kind of pinky tone looks. I don't know, I like it. One or technically three other eye things I've been using this month that I really, really enjoyed is this trio from Stila. I had not tried any of the like glimmer and glow, glitter and glow, shimmer and the glow, glitter top coat things for your eyeballs. I haven't tried any of those. And every time I went into Sephora to try them out, all of them were sold out and I didn't really want to just like go out on a whim and buy one just because I didn't know how I felt about any of them. But when they came out with this trio, which is basically three colors that were smaller for the price of one full size one, which I was like, I mean, I know I already like Kitten. The other two are pretty safe colors. You have Kitten Karma, Smoldering Satin, which is like a taupe shade, and then Rose Gold Retro, which is rose gold. I actually layered these two on top of each other and it looked amazing. Like it looked so good. I'll include some like photos that I took of my eyeshadow, but I really, really like these. And again, when I'm off of my no buy, I will invest in more of these because I think they're really great quality. And I like the idea of these because I don't like using glitter a lot because it's so fucking annoying and like uncomfortable. And these are like weirdly comfortable on my eyes for being like a cream glitter product. Like I would have expected it to be like chunky and awkward and irritating, but it's not. Like what, it, what kind of witchcraft is this, Stila? What kind of witchcraft is this? <sighs> anyway, let me know what some of your favorite color combos with these particular things, if you have tried them, um, or if you want me to use them in an upcoming tutorial. I probably will in a get ready with me because I haven't done a get ready with me in a while. Yeah, I like these. Couple of things that I've been using this month are the complete opposite of each other, even though they're both kind of grungy. One is what I'm wearing on my mouth right now, and I actually wore it in my anti haul that I posted a couple weeks ago, which has gotten the greatest response I have gotten on any video in a long time. I gained over 100 subscribers in the last like two weeks, you guys. That has not happened in literal years. I have not gained this number of subscribers in this amount of time literally since 2014. So thank you to all of the new people that have joined me here, joined all of us. Thank you for joining me. You are amazing. I'm glad you're here. Maybe my 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 like plan of getting out of the 13,000 subscriber funk this year is gonna happen. Who knows? But anyway, uh, Max Stone is the lipstick color that I've been obsessed with this month. It is the most perfect kind of grayish color. It's like, to it's literally the color of like concrete. 
literally concrete color. It's such a great color. I really, really like Max Matte Formula. I haven't tried any of their retro matte except Candy Yum Yum, which I despised. So like, maybe I don't like their retro matte. I like their regular matte. It's really creamy. It's on my lips right now. It's great, it's comfortable, it layers really well. It's just great. I love this color. It's the perfect winter shade for like grungy looks or for, I don't know, if you wanna do like a neutral lip that's not like nude and not pink with like a bright colored eye, like I wore like a bright red, like a deep red eyeshadow look in my anti haul with this and I really liked the way that it looked. I don't know. It's a great lipstick, highly recommend it. And then the next lipstick I've been wearing a lot this month and I've been enjoying is uh, Midnight Wasabi from Rihanna. Oops, watch that. God, the formula is so fucking good. It is literally like bright army green. Maybe not army. I feel like it reminds me of a snake. Like it's very, sna it's, it's very Slytherin. <gasps> oh my God. Should I redo my Slytherin look and use this as my lipstick? Yes. Anyway. I'll get back to that in a minute. These Fenty Beauty Mademoiselle lipsticks are a great formula. Again, when I get off of my no buy, I will be investing in more of these because I appreciate a line at Sephora that is doing something cool and different and not making like a liquid to matte lipstick, I'm not doing like a glittery top coat. Like this is just a creamy matte lipstick. Like it's, it's a very basic kind of idea, but you have bright green colors. Like thank you, Rihanna, for like changing the game. Thank you. This is a great color, Midnight Wasabi. I highly recommend it if you like weird, gothy, bizarre colors. She has some more like wearable colors too if you're not as adventurous as some people are. And I like the packaging too. It's like really sleek. Like it looks, it almost looks like one of those like fancy cigarette holders from like the 90s. It just, it's, it's bougie in like the best way possible. <sighs> Thank you, Rihanna. I love you. One favorite that I never thought that I would enjoy and I never thought I would invest in is the Cover FX Illuminating Setting Spray. I literally only bought this because of Raw Beauty Christy and if you haven't subscribed to her channel yet, what the hell are you doing with your life? She's great. She's a dry skin girl like me. While I love the Kat Von D setting spray and I love the Pixie setting spray, this is so good, you guys. Like, if you don't mind a bit of shine on your face, don't mind a bit of shimmer. Don't mind a couple flecks of like teeny tiny shimmery glitter. Honestly, I don't care about having like fine particles of like shimmery mica on my face. It's an illuminating setting spray. So if you go too ham on it, you're gonna look like the Tin Man, but you gotta shake it up really good until the ball starts to shake around. Um, because this does settle. Uh, so if you just spray it straight out of the bottle, you will be shining bright like a diamond, um, but not in a good way. <laughs> so highly recommend this, but make sure to use it the way it's supposed to be used. Shake it up vigorously like a salt shaker, like a Polaroid pitcher, okay? And then the last makeup favorite is something that I forgot that I actually had. I was going through like a nostalgia fest watching old makeup tutorials from my old YouTube channel. By the way, if you want to watch some of my old videos, they're really cringy. I might actually do like a reacting to and roasting my old makeup tutorials because they were so bad, like so bad. But honestly, now that I have discovered this green lipstick, I might redo my Harry Potter look tutorials um, because this would be perfect for Slytherin. Cause like, honestly, like how Salazar is this? This is Salazar in a lipstick, come on. As I was going through old videos, I found an old video, an old favorites video actually. It was an old January favorites video, that's weird from six years ago, 2012. I had a pixie cut, check it, seriously. And my friend Lena and I did a swap of a bunch of stuff. She sent me stuff from the UK, I sent her stuff from the US, and this was something that she sent me, one of the Barry M No Polishes. This is a polish that I was obsessed with when I first got it, and then it just kind of like fell by the wayside. And I started putting this on my lips yet, not my lips, my nails. <laughs> Do not put nail polish on your lips, um, even if some liquid lipsticks feel that way. Colourpop. Nail Paint by Barry M, and this is the color Dusky Mauve, and it is exactly the way you think it is. It is a kind of very, very softly duochrome, like gr like grayish and mauve. You cannot tell in on my nails very well in this light, but let's see if I can get it to focus. 
Okay, so you can kind of see the mauve kind of tones popping out, but on my nails, it looks more gray, right? It's the coolest color. I'm obsessed with it. Is Barium even still a thing? Friends from the UK, please tell me if Barium is still a thing. If it's not, I'm gonna hoard this forever because it's a great nail polish. Or friends in the US, oh God, that is uh, leaking. Okay, I should not be just swinging this around. All right, makeup beauty favorites done. One thing I do have to go on a tangent about, um, I've noticed that a lot of you have been asking where I got my earrings lately. These are my new favorite earrings that I've been wearing them almost every single day. I got them from an Etsy seller called Open the Cellar Door, which I will link to below in the description, as well as where I got this necklace, this dope deer antler filigree necklace. I'm obsessed with it. Um, I feel very macabre and cool and dark and twisted fantasy with this. <laughs> I don't know, I love this aesthetic. Like my mom has always been into antiques and I feel like I finally found my like antiques aesthetic, like weird macabre shit, like taxidermy squirrels, like giving the finger and like skulls of weird animals. I feel like that's gonna be my thing. So I've been really liking this kind of stuff, this like kind of witchy vibe, macabre, gothic. Thing. Um, all the things that she makes are ethically sourced, so she uses a lot of bones and a lot of taxidermy in her jewelry. I will post a link to these earrings below or something very, very similar if they are sold out on Etsy, as well as the uh, filigree deer antler necklace. I quite like it. On that similar vein, I've been really into just general witchy vibes. So like grown up hot topic. So I've been obsessed with Killstar. Uh, if you have not kind of opened your brain to Killstar, Dot com. Uh, I highly recommend you do. Pretty much everything on that website is black. I particularly have been like obsessed with this wallet that I've been needing a new wallet for a long time. And I saw this one on Killstar and I was like, I need this in my life. Not only does it zip all the way around, so it's great. Like just, I can put my phone in here. It's vegan leather, so it's it's not crazy expensive, but it's really great quality and it's just great. It's got these cool little like side edges that I can use to like hit people or gouge eyes out if somebody like tries to come at me on the street and also like scare people away if I want to, because I can be like, I hex you into the next dimension. Ha! It's a great kind of statement piece just in terms of just like, a wallet and it's big enough to carry as a clutch so if I wanted to put my phone in it if I wanted to put like my car keys that's really all I would need and I would just carry this around being like oh yeah this cool like little mini wallet clutch I really really like this I bought a couple other pieces from Killstar which I will post links to below and any like pictures that I might have taken on Instagram of them um, but I love the aesthetic I wish I had more money that I could just like buy everything but it's basically like Kids from Hot Topic grew up and like got more, I, I don't know. It's like, it's grown up Hot Topic. Like it's literally, if you've kind of always been intrigued by the aesthetic of Hot Topic, but have always felt ashamed in shopping at Hot Topic for some stupid reason, check out Killstar. Yeah, my voice is so going. I need to finish this video soon. Television favorites. Uh, honestly, most of what I've been watching in the last month has been like Netflix and Drunk History came back. I will say, I appreciated the season premiere of Drunk History so much, doing the heroines episode, it was amazing. And I loved the uh, the storytellers that Derek had on the show, Amber Ruffin, Tiffany Haddish. I just remember that like Mandy Moore played Clara Barton in the actual sequence. I don't know, I love Drunk History and I'm glad it's back. And the season premiere was Amazing, but the TV show that has been taking over my last month, I can solely blame on my boyfriend. I never would have watched this if he had not started watching it and then kept telling me about it. So Merlin was the thing that was on the BBC a handful of years ago. It started in 2009 and it ended in like 2014. So this was like the family friendly telling of the story of King Arthur and Merlin as they were young adults. And this is the cheesiest fucking show ever. It is literally the opposite of Game of Thrones in terms of it just being like family friendly. Nobody dies. Everything is like generally happy at the end. Like there's no nudity except like occasional shirtless boys, which is like nothing. So if you're somebody that likes kind of the medieval magical themes, but gets 
uncomfortable at certain things with other shows. Merlin's on Netflix, there's five seasons of it. The one problem I have with it is Katie McGrath uh, is a terrible actress. Um, if you don't know who she is, she plays Lena Luthor in Supergirl and she sucks. So that's the only thing that I have a problem with the show. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun show. It's something that's very easy to consume. It's something that is so different than anything that's on TV right now. So if you're kind of bored with what's on TV right now, check out Merlin. It's so, so very British. <laughs> so very BBC. Let me know what shows you've been watching a lot on Netflix and if you've ever seen Merlin and what your thoughts are about it. What other favorite things? Music. Okay. Music favorites for me for this month. Uh, I have been basically listening to one album the entire month. I have no shame in talking about, like, this, this is it. This is the only album I'm listening to this month. Like, that, this is it. Fucking Typhoon's new record, Offerings, has changed my world yet again. God damn it, Typhoon. Fucking killing the game every time you get on the scene, on the game. Every time you start playing the game, you're killing it. They're playing in Seattle next month and I'm gonna cry my little eyes out. I mean, I listened to this record all the way through when I went to their like meet up listening party thing where they like gave us all Walkmen and we got to like listen to the record at sunset at Sculpture Park for, uh, it, it was in like, October or something, September? I don't remember, it was cold. We all met up at the, this one place, they gave us Walkman, we plugged in our headphones and we all started the music at the exact same time and it was absolutely magical. That's how I got to listen to the record for the first time, on a Walkman at sunset, surrounded by people who were also listening to the same album for the first time. It was the coolest thing ever. I'm eternally grateful for Typhoon for making an effort to do that and their new album, Offerings, is amazing. Clearly I've talked about it in the last couple of videos and made it my song of the day, but I am so excited to see them play next month live because I have not seen them in at least five years, honestly. White Lighter came out in 2013 and I think that's the last time I saw them play and I think that it's been that long since they've played in Seattle. I know that Kyle did like a solo show last year, I think, but they weren't really playing for the long time because Kyle got sick and so they, they weren't touring and they weren't recording because he wasn't sure if he was gonna fucking die. If you're curious to know more of the backstory of Typhoon, I will post a link to um, a video up here where I talked about it more in depth um, because my relationship with that band is very deep and very complex and very um, storied and, and long-standing and I'm very excited to see them play next month and I finally get to talk to Kyle and actually tell him how much his songs mean to me. It's life-affirming and it's, it's long and it's just, it's epic and it's moving and it's it's got all of the elements of typhoon before this like beautiful heavy wall of sound focestral feeling but it's got i don't know it's got more experimentation involved which is really cool yeah i don't know i i could go on for for hours talking about typhoon and how much i love their music which i might do after i see their show um that might just be a vlog who knows i don't know so today's song of the day is Algernon from Offerings, from Typhoon's new record, obviously, because it's the only thing I've been listening to this last month, um, unless it was the band, a Seattle band. So uh, let me know in the comments below what some of your favorite products of the month have been, um, if you've tried any of these and what your thoughts are. Also let me know if you want me to do like roasting and reacting to my old makeup tutorials or redoing my Harry Potter makeup tutorials because I could definitely do a better job with them now. Subscribe to my channel. That would be amazing. I would love you forever. Hit the little bell to get notified every time I upload a new video. And then check out my previous video. It was my Valentine's Day Lush haul. And now I'm going to just go drink some honey and lemon and try to soothe my voice. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!